Okay, so today we're going to look at uh, filariasis or a condition commonly known as elephantiasis. So we'll go straight to the definition of elephantiasis. So how can we define elephantiasis or lymphatic filariasis? We can define it as this is a parasitic tropical disease caused by the filarial worm uh, transmitted to human beings through a mosquito bite affecting the lymphatic system. And it is characterized by enlargement of the limbs as well as the scrotum and the fever. So you find that when it comes to elephantiasis or lymphatic filariasis, that is how you can give the complete definition. This condition is caused by a parasite and this parasite we are saying it is known as a filarial worm. And we'll look at different types of worms. Apart from that, it is also transmitted to human beings through a mosquito because it acts as an intermediate host. Apart from that, we are saying it is characterized by enlargement of the limbs. You'll find that someone's legs begin to enlarge and they will have a coarse skin of these legs, which is very thick. And uh, hence, this condition uh, gets its name uh, as uh, elephantiasis because of that particular description. Apart from that, there's also fever or raised body temperature because of the presence of the filarial worm in the body. And uh, apart from that, in men, it may affect the scrotum, and this also affects the uh, bearing of children. So you find that this is how the condition may uh, manifest, and that is how we can define elephantiasis. So apart from that, we can look at the types of uh, filarial worms, the worms that may cause elephantiasis. So we have worms such as Wucheria bancrofti, which causes lymphatic filariasis, which is also commonly known as elephantiasis. Apart from that, we have the Brugia malai as well causes uh, lymphatic filariasis. We also have the Brugia timori. Apart from that, we have uh, the other organism which causes uh, subcutaneous filariasis, which is known as Oncoseca volvulus. So Oncoseca volvulus causes uh, subcutaneous filariasis. In this particular case, you are going to see uh, worms moving under the skin and you can literally touch them or see them moving. Sometimes they may also affect the eyelids and you can see worms eh, who are moving under the eyelid of this particular individual. And uh, hence it is, you may find the description being called um, uh, liver blindness because of that particular uh, description in terms of how the worm moves under the, uh, the, the, the eyelid. Apart from that, we have the other cause of uh, filario, filariasis, which is lower lower, and this one also causes subcutaneous filariasis. So you need to know at least the five causes of fila filariasis because you may be asked to list them. Okay, so from there we can move on to look at um, we can move on to look at the life cycle. As usual, for any tropical condition, you need to know the life cycle of uh, that particular condition. So we can look at the life cycle of elephantiasis. So as usual, we are going to start with the, the first stage. So on stage one, you'll find that um, a, a human being who is an intermediate host is going to be beaten or uh, as a mosquito in other ways is taking a, a, a blood meal, it is going to bite this human being who is an intermediate host and it will deposit um, the filarial worm in the blood of this particular human being, which is at lava stage three. From there, we go to stage two. Once the filarial worm is inside the human being's blood or the lymphatic circulation, you find that from there, it is going to move uh, into deeper tissue by resulting in production of a, a, a sheathed microfilariae, which migrates into the, lymph, uh, into the lymph as well as blood channel. So the adult worm, which is the lava stage three, when it reaches from stage two, we said when it reaches the blood stream, it is going to undergo multiplication or it will undergo multiplication producing smaller filarial worm. And these smaller filarial worm are known as microfilariae. So these microfilariae in stage three, they are the one now that move into the lymph circulation as well as blood channel. 
So at this particular point, you'll find that this, uh, this microfilaria will start feeding from the blood, uh, from the walls of the lymph nodes or the lymphatic secretion. Once they continue feeding from there, there is inflammation that occurs, blocking supply to the intended organ. And this is what results in enlargement. So since we are talking about the, uh, the life cycle, this is where we'll end for now. Then we move on to stage four. So on stage four, another mosquito is going to take a blood meal ingesting the microfilaria. Remember for this life cycle to go back to the first stage where we are coming from, you need an intermediate host, which is a mosquito to complete the life cycle. Just as in malaria, you need a mosquito to complete the life cycle. Similarly, also in elephantiasis, you need a mosquito which acts as an intermediate host for growth of the microfilaria. That's why on stage four, another mosquito takes a blood meal and it will ingest the microfilaria. On stage five, the microfilaria is going to shed its sheath, penetrating the mosquito's mid gut and will migrate to the thoracic muscles. So at this particular stage, the microfilaria, for it to undergo maturity, it needs to go to the mosquito's um, the thoracic muscles because there's a lot of energy that is taken to the chest muscles of the mosquito just as in comparison to the human being so it needs to go to the thoracic muscles to undergo growth so inside the thoracic muscles on stage six you'll find that the microfilaria will undergo development to lava stage one and then to lava stage two then finally to lava stage three so on lava stage three which is now the infective form so uh, on lava stage three, once the microfilaria de develops to lava stage three, it now no longer needs to stay inside the mosquito's uh, chest, but it now needs to move to the proboscis or, or, or the, the, the mouth of this particular mosquito by migrating to the, to the salivary glands, which are found on the proboscis. So you'll find that at this particular stage now, the lava stage three will migrate to the proboscis uh, or the head of the mosquito. And at this particular stage now, all it needs is to bite another human being. And once that happens, the life cycle will continue now in the human being. So that is what happens with um, the, the, the life cycle of elephantiasis or lymphatic filariasis. So uh, this is just what I'm um, from explaining. So you can read it through and uh, also get some points. But from there, we can try to talk about the pathophysiology or disease progression of elephantiasis. So you find that um, we have different, because we have different cases of elephantiasis, even their progression is different, but how they affect each, each organ or structure is the same. So you find that the most common uh, form of the adult worm is found in the lymphatic vessel near the lymph node where they distort vessel as well as cause local inflammation. And once this happens, you find that there'll be obstruction of the, uh, of the lymphatic vessels causing the surrounding tissue to become enlarged.
Then apart from that, you'll find that the conjunctiva may also be affected where the worms migrate to the conjunctiva of the eye and can sometimes be seen moving beneath the skin of the eye or the white part of the eye, or which is known as the conjunctiva. If untreated, the, con the, the condition is known as onchocerciasis, which causes see, blindness or liver blindness in other words. So that is how the, the disease progresses in elephantiasis by affecting different different structures and how they are affected is causing blockage of the lymph circulation to those particular structures. When it comes to the symptoms, the patient may experience chills, sweat, as well as headache. You find that chills as well as sweating is because of presence of, um, uh, I mean, it's because of fever. And apart from that, fever may also be seen as a symptom due to presence of the filarial worm in the body headache due to blockage of the uh, lymph circulation to the, to the uh, brain tissue. Apart from that, lymphagitis due to inflammation of the lymphatic system. You may also see swelling of the legs or the scrotum due to blockage of the lymph circulation to the legs as well as the scrotum. So you may see these particular symptoms being seen in elephantiasis. From there, we can move on to talk about the management of elephantiasis. So when it comes to management of elephantiasis, we'll start from medical management. However, you find that it is hard to reverse the effects of elephantiasis. That's why you find that most when a patient suffers from elephantiasis, it is hard to treat, but it is very easy to prevent. So reversible of enlargement of structures is very hard. It may not even occur. That's why you find may, many patients may end up now uh, having to live with those disfigurement for the rest of their lives. So when it comes to M's as usual, whenever you're writing management, you need to start with M's. Uh, you can talk about to promote a quick recovery to prevent complications such as permanent uh, enlargement of the affected structures. You can talk about to relieve cardinal symptoms of, um, of elephantiasis. And uh, apart from that, you can also say to, uh, to educate the patient about the condition itself. So those and any other aims, you can talk about them. From there, your next heading is medical management. And under medical management, you need to write investigations as a smaller heading. And for the investigations, you can do a uh, history. So history will review uh, traveling to an endemic area. And in Zambia, endemic areas are those individuals living closer to game parks because they are the most predisposed to elephantiasis. Apart from that, during physical examination, you're going to say the patient will present with enlargement of the scrotum or the legs. Then you can also do uh, a gem sustained test. So a gem sustained test will come out positive for elephantiasis. Apart from that, a polymerase chain reaction test will also come out positive for elephantiasis. You can do an X-ray uh, an X-ray of the limbs or affected structures, which will review presence of adult worms. Apart from that, you can do a leaf biopsy, which will review presence of worm, a uh, filarial worm in the blood. So these are some of the investigations that you can do. And on investigations, all you need to mention is 5V uh, investigations. Yeah, one history, one physical, and the remaining three can either be labs or radiologicals. From there, you even move on to treatment and you need to complete, of course, the side effects, dosage, the route and everything else for the drugs. So when it comes to the drugs that are given, you can give uh, the drug of choice in elephantiasis, which is known as dithiocabamazine, which is abbreviated as DEC. So dithiocabamazine, you can give uh, six milligrams per kg body weight per day, and uh, you give it um, um, uh, at least for between for, for 12 days. So you find that uh, the one day re regime or treatment is as effective as the 12 days eh, regime. So you can give it as a single dose or for 12 days once eh, a day. Apart from that, the other drug that can be given is albendazole. So albendazole will give 400 milligrams as a single dose as well. You can give ivermectin. Ivermectin, you give um, uh, 150 micrograms start. 
So you give, we can also give Ivermectin 150 micrograms a start. Apart from that, the last one that you can give is an antibiotic like ampicillin. So ampicillin may also be used, which is 500 milligrams QID orally for five days. So at least the three specific drugs, and these are some of the drugs that can be given in treatment of uh, elephantiasis. However, the effects of elephantiasis may be not reversible. So the patient may have to live with those def uh, defects for, for life. Then when it comes to the nursing management, nursing management of elephantiasis, you use a profenema, meaning you are talking about environment, nursing the patient in the general medical ward from environment, talk about um, position. You can nurse the patient in any comfortable position, talk about rest and interventions that can promote rest, talk about observations, talk about psychological care to the patient, hygiene, talk about uh, exercises because they need to promote circulation in this particular individual. Apart from that, talk about uh, nutrition, talk about medication, uh, elimination as well, and also advice on e discharge. So the only nursing care that you can give to an individual with the elephantiasis is just general nursing care in that particular manner and the profenema will always have the same point so you all you need is just to know the the details of a profenema and life becomes easy when it comes to complications of elephantiasis or lymphatic filariasis there can be lymph system damage and this is due to invasion of the lymphatic system with the, the filarial worm apart from that kidney damage due to impaired lymph circulation to the kidneys as well as blockage of uh, filtration then apart from that pain you know, to, from affected structures due to invasion of the filarial worms to structures such as the scrotum or the legs disfigurement due to abnormal enlargement of the uh, invaded structures. Apart from that, sexual disability due to enlargement of the scrotum, social rejection due to abnormal enlargement of body structures uh, uh, and other um, complication that may be seen. So that is how we can manage elephantiasis as a tropical condition. And those are some of the complications. So for today, we'll end here. Thank you so much for taking time to go through the lesson.